intelligent person looks at the data. And you know what else? The intelligent person looks at the data before the treatment, not after. Right. That makes sense. Don't be sorry. Don't be sorry. Look at the data first. So let's just look at the data. I want to answer this gentleman's question. What does the intelligent man do for prostate cancer? Well, let's just say, for example, a man with prostate cancer wants to know what their prognosis is. What's their likelihood of being cancer-free years after treatment? That's what you really want to know. Sure, of course. Right? And if you have an initial PSA of 4 to 10, so most people consider 4 as the lower limit of searching for prostate cancer, although we know there could be some prostate cancers, even if the PSA is a little less. True enough. If you go to one of the most famous surgeons in New York, the chief of the department of a big cancer hospital, and you have prostate cancer, PSA 4 to 10, the chance of being cancer-free five years later, if they cut out the whole prostate, what do you think it is? Cancer-free five years later, 60%. Okay, it is 76%. Okay, okay so if the, you go to the big surgeon at the big hospital and they cut out your prostate, your PSA was 4 to 10 at the time of your diagnosis, your chance of being cancer-free is 76%, meaning a quarter of the men have already had recurrence within five years. Okay. Now, if those same men came to us, and this is based on our data of 3,000 men with prostate cancer that I've treated over 20 years your chance of being cancer-free is 90%. Okay. Wow. I mean, significant. Okay, so the difference between 76% with surgery or 90% with me is 18%. So 18%, there's more than 200,000 men a year with prostate cancer in America. 18% is 36,000 lives saved if they came to us rather than they went to surgeon. Right. And this is the best surgeon. It's not the average surgeon sure, or the sure. worst surgeon. This is considered top of the, the line. The top of the line. Yep. New York can't get better. So, if you were a person, God forbid, right. God forbid, you had prostate cancer, and your PSA was four to ten, would you take the seventy-six percent option or the ninety percent option? I'll play the odds, doctor. I'll go with the ninety percent. You'd go with the ninety percent, sure, without a doubt. And would you rather have invasive surgery where they're opening you up, separating the bladder and the rectum, pulling out the prostate? Or would you like the kind of treatment that you come in, get a treatment, and go out to I'd lunch? I'd rather come see you uh, five times for 15 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think so. Okay, so, <laughs> uh, I mean, there's different schedules. So we talk about different schedules, and we talk about custom-tailored treatment for prostate cancer. But the fact is, if you want 76%, go to surgeons. This is for PSA 4 to 10. Mm -hmm. If you want 90%... Radio surgery. Come to Lederman. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now what happens if you have, let's say, a PSA of 10 to 20? Okay, so that's higher risk. The sure. higher your PSA, the higher the risk. So if you go to that same surgeon, his success rate is 69%. Okay, I was going to say, it probably came down, and it did. Right. So this is 69%. Our success rate, if you have a PSA 10 to 20, is 86%. Wow. 25% higher. Right. So you're getting better odds as you get more risky cancer right, with us. Sure. So if you want surgery, 69% for PSA 10 to 20. If you want Dr. Lederman, non-invasive, minimally invasive treatment, 86%, 25% higher. So where does the intelligent man go? Why would anyone go for surgery? And have you looked at the complication rate? We have here a letter. This is from the chief of robotic surgery at a big cancer hospital nearby, unnamed. We'll, we'll leave that alone, the name alone. And this is a letter that that doctor wrote about my patient. My patient went to see him before he came to me, mm -hmm. and this is what he wrote. Mr. X was most interested in learning more about surgery for prostate cancer, in particular the robotic procedure. I explained to him the details of the operation and the anticipated post-operative course. Then I reviewed the potential short and long-term risk of surgery. These include, but are not limited to, infection, bleeding, positional injuries, deep venous thrombosis, pulmonary emboli, bowel injury, rectal injury, ureteral injury, 
cardiac or respiratory problems, penile shortening. <clears> hmm. <throat> I think we all know what that is. Urethral strictures, incontinence, infertility, and impotence. Those are risk of surgery. Lastly, I explained that while I prefer the robotic approach, there is no convincing study demonstrating clear superiority over either open or conventional laparoscopic prostatectomy. So why the heck would someone get surgery? Why? I just don't understand. I don't know if they're being convinced by their doctor, if this is the, uh, the right know. approach, if it's the standard, you, know. you know. Unfortunately, I think many people are led to believe if they remove the prostate, they're right. home free. That could the just... fact is those are the risks of the complications or potential complications. You can see from the data that the data is not very good for open or uh, laparoscopic or robotic surgery. And in fact, there's lots of data showing that robotic surgery is pretty dangerous. So we're going to go to a word from our sponsor, the man with the golden voice, <laughs> and we'll be back to take your calls. If you have calls, please call us at 212-CHOICES, 212-246-4237, 212-246-4237. Thank Here's you. Here's Dr. Gil Lederman, New York's only Harvard-trained, triple-board-certified radiation cancer doctor. If chemo surgery or radiation isn't working or isn't tolerated when cancer and its pain and symptoms aren't getting better, seek a fresh second opinion at Radio Surgery New York's Urgent Cancer Consultants for innovative, custom-tailored cancer treatment. See our experts within one business day because we know your time and your life are precious. Our goal is proper diagnosis and effective, non-invasive outpatient treatment. Decades of leadership, first in New York with brain radio surgery, First in America with body radio surgery for cancers of the brain, body, and prostate. All custom tailored for you. Call 212 Choices, 212 Choices for a prompt appointment and free booklet DVD. Super convenient, 38th and Broadway, with most insurances, Medicare, Medicaid accepted. You're next at Radio Surgery New York. Just call 212 Choices, 212 Choices. For cancer treatment, most prefer effective, non-invasive, well-tolerated outpatient therapy. At Radio Surgery New York, the Radio Surgery Pioneers, that's our goal too. We're first in America, first in New York, first for you with body radio surgery. We hit your cancer from head to toe with no cutting, no bleeding. We have decades of experience with primary and metastatic, large or small cancers. Cancer treatment with possibly a second chance for you, even if chemo, radiation, or surgery didn't work or isn't tolerated. Our goals are the best results and quality of life. Hi, I'm Dr. Gil Lederman. For a free booklet and DVD, call 212 Choices. 212 Choices for a fresh second opinion. Most insurances, Medicare, Medicaid accepted. We're super convenient, Broadway and 38th in Manhattan, Hyperthermia 2. To hit your cancer, call 212 Choices. 212 Choices for Radio Surgery New York. Welcome back to the Radio Surgery Hour. This is Rob Redstone here with Dr. Gil Lederman at the WABC Studios in the heart of New York City. We're just a few steps from the Radio Surgery New York Cancer Treatment Center on Broadway and 38th Street. Dr. Lederman, the leading cancer expert, treats prostate cancer non invasively. He was the first in New York with fractionated brain radio surgery, and he's the first in America and in the Western Hemisphere with body radio surgery. Hey, Dr. Lederman, we're back. Hi, good morning. Welcome back. We had a caller who uh, contacted us, contacted me, about their husband who has a recurrent glioblastoma. Excuse me, I think we have a call from a caller, probably. Uh, good morning, it's Dr. Lederman. You're on the air, WABC. And I was wondering if you can comment on that because, you know, I, I've seen, especially, I mean, in, in Long Island. Yeah, just hold on one minute. Just hold on. Well, you're, hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, well, I think it's true. And uh, we actually we've comment, we comment almost every week about that happening. I was going to comment today. I had a man who came in to me with a uh, 
with a PSA of 2.9. He actually went to the urologist. He was sent to the urologist for kidney stones. He's a 45-year-old man. He had no symptoms. He went for kidney stones, and all the urologists he 